Welcome to Springville Seventh-day Adventist Church online here in Melbourne, Australia. Are you keeping our community safe by following the guidelines for COVID-19 provided by the government? I repeat, are you keeping our community safe by following the guidelines for COVID-19 provided by the government? Please comment and encourage others to do the same, to, to cooperate with keeping our communities safe. Today, we have a very special program. And uh, before we continue, we're going to have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we want to ask you to be with us. To be with us today. As you, as you encourage us through your word. We also pray, Lord, not just for ourselves, but also for those ar around this world that are going through a lot of heartache, a lot of turmoil because of this COVID-19 sickness. Lord, today as we, as we worship you, may you give us a sense of peace and encouragement so that we can continue to use all of this, all that encouragement, all that peace, all that, all that faith that you give us, Lord, through your word, through the songs that we sing today so that we, we may continue to have that dream next week. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing our first, our first hymn for today, and that is hymn 99, God Will Take Care of You. Today he will preach part two of, of a sermon that he, he shared with us two weeks ago. Thank you, Jonah. Happy Sabbath, everybody. It's me, I'm back. And it's, the Sabbath has just come upon us. So as we start and as, as you listen, I'm going to say a prayer to open Sabbath and to open our worship today. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are now in the Sabbath hours, and Lord, it is a blessing, Lord, that you have brought us thus far. Lord, you have um, brought us through six days, Lord. Anything could have happened, Lord, but you have brought us all to this point, Lord. We are thankful, Lord, for the holy time that we are now in. I pray and ask, Lord, that you bless us, keep us, Lord, 
and never leave us, Lord. And I pray and ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit be in this in this message today, Lord, as we continue from our, the last message I was here with. And I pray, Lord, in a special anointing, Lord, that um, your Holy Spirit may enter, that he may anoint our ears and my lips, Lord, for I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, well, back again, and it's good to be back. Uh, my wife had put me on the spot and said I had a part two. So we are going to try and do a part two of um, the last message, which was a couple of weeks ago. But again, it is nice to be here in a nice warm church. And if you don't know, it's freezing outside. That's why I have a scarf on. But like last time, we're going to, we spoke about Moses and the rock, amongst other things. And we're sort of going to carry on with that theme. But you know, as, as well, uh, we read two passages of the same story but in different books. And so I thought we'd try and do that today with maybe two questions and two answers that are the same. So if you can open your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 19, and we're going to start with verse 8, and we're going to read all the way to verse 10. So that's 1 Kings chapter 19. We're going to start at verse 8. Through to ten. And I know you're there, so amen. And the Bible reads, we're going to start it here and then we're going to backtrack a little bit straight after this. But I'm going to ask, leave you with this thought, or start you off with this thought. Verse 8. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in strength of the meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the Mount of God. So we're talking about Elijah here. So he, something, we're going to go back to that in a, in a minute. Verse 9. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. Remember that, I'm going to repeat that. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, Elijah. And he said unto Elijah, what doest thou here, Elijah? And Elijah said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy brothers with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And then Sorry, we're going to keep going because we want to see that second, that second part I was talking about. And verse 11, and he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. I'll see that say that again. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord and behold the Lord pass by and great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, here's that second, the second part. What doest thou here, Elijah? We, see, we hear a repeat. Verse 14. And he said, oh, exactly the same thing, but we'll read it. Verse 14. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. So there we have two questions and two answers that are identical. Basically very identical. But, you know, a lot of people seem to think Elijah hadn't learned anything since he repeated the same, the same answer. But keep your thought there, and we're going to go to chapter 18. I just want to 
touch on something very quickly. So just a bit of a background. Chapter 19, we see Elijah was on the run, and he had, God had instructed him to go to a cave. So he went to this cave. But before that, you know that famous story where Elijah had gone to Mount Horeb, not Mount Horeb, Mount Carmel, and he, and he had the, the false prophets and, the, um, and all the, the fallen people of... Uh, no, I will stick to the false prophets. We had all these false prophets. Elijah had climbed the mountain and he, had killed, they, he said, kill the calf. They killed the calf and they had, put, they had cleaned it, put the calf, a calf each, put it on the altar with some wood under it. And Elijah said, now you pray to your God and ask your God to rain fire. And then I will pray to my God and see whose God will light the altar. But I want to I want to read something. And we're going to go to chapter 18, verse 30. We'll start there. So Isaiah, um, sorry, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 30. And we'll go down to verse 32. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near. So he's calling all the people he, before they do all this... Um, Asking God, their God, to light the fire, the altar. It says, come close. In verse 31. Sorry, verse 30. It continues to say, and all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. Now, just going back to verse 30. This is what caught my eye, and you may have known this already. But what was the purpose of Elijah calling the people to come close? What was he about to do? He was about to repair. Repair what? He was about to repair the altar. So that gives us a little indication, because this is Israel here. This is fallen Israel. It, it, Elijah gives the imp impression that the altar has been destroyed because they have been disobedient. So in coming, he said he's going to repair the altar. And it's interesting 12 stones. And that's what, well, you know, what the theme of this little message has been about is the rock and the stones. Basically the same thing. So he's repairing these altars that have been broken down by the children of Israel. And it's interesting, it goes on to say 12 stones, which represents the 12 tribes of Jacob. Meaning he's come to repair, in my mind, the church. The church in its fallen state, have broken down everything that God had asked him to build. So he had come along and he had been, he told them, I'm here to repair this church. That's the story I get in my head. So I find that very interesting. If you look at today, you know, very interesting that, you know, COVID-19 is by, by no accident. And our church worldwide you know, sometimes, you know, if you look with a certain lens, you can see that the church is falling apart in some ways. And in some ways, I believe maybe COVID-19 is saying, is asking his people to come back and repair what has been damaged. So, uh, you know, it took me a little while, but I think that's what COVID-19 has done for me. When I, when I sit there and I observe, because you, you, you should be studying, like we said before, you should be studying, you should be, you, you do see that God may be calling his people to come back and repair what has been broken. So I believe this is what Elijah has come to do. But we're going to go back to chapter 19. So after that, we know the story of Mount Carmel. That's what happens after that repairing of the altar. Now we'll go back to verse 9 to 11, and we're going to go through it again in chapter 19. Now, just quickly, 
You know, I remember when, um, if, if any of you have ever been in a storm, I've been in a few, but in the islands, the, the Cook Islands, every year they have a hurricane. I've only been to a few there. I think, I think the last one I went to, I was in, was Cyclone Pam. So there was a storm in the Cook Islands. And if you know what a storm is like being, especially a, a little island of the Rarotonga where I was on, it is very loud, the storm. And the waves were actually coming from the sea over the reef into the town. That's how powerful the storm was. So a reason why I bring that up because we're talking about a storm that was mentioned here. And if you've ever been in a storm, you know, sometimes I actually like being in a storm, but that's just probably the guy in me. So that's, you'll, you'll be in the storm and you notice that the coconut trees are flowing, you know, on its side. Rocks have come from the ocean onto the, onto land. You don't know how they got there, but it come through the windy winds and the, and the rough seas. That's how it got there. So I've been in a couple of those and one thing about it is very noisy. And there's also a time in New Zealand. I'm not sure, even Warrigal one time when we were living there where I have experienced an earthquake. You know, my wife comes from a town in Hastings, and apparently they have a lot of ha a lot of earthquakes in Hastings, and that's where I experienced my first earthquake. It wasn't big, but I thought, you know, I never thought at that time that an earthquake would be so loud. So we were on a campground and sitting in the in the, our camp, and all of a sudden everything started moving. You know, we all started joking afterwards. We wouldn't have been joking if the earth cracked up and we all fell in, but um, we we all started real. We started talking because man, we could hear the roof shaking. We could hear it. It's like a clapping. It was almost like almost like thunder. So this is what an earthquake does. Even an earthquake, the rumble and the noise very noisy. And then we also have, if you remember, I've been also a part of a fire. Not in the fire, but around the fire. Back in uh, a few years ago, we had in here in Melbourne Black Saturday. And if any of you were out near the country where we were, we were in Warrigal, we were there were fires there, but they were, the worst of it was further out. Even the fire, when we went to help a friend out in a country farm, when we had got to his farm to see if it was, this was on Sabbath, we went to help. Even on Sabbath, we went to to see if a friend needed help. Amongst the smoke was also a lot of noise. You know, I'm not sure if you've ever been in a fire, in a storm, or in an earthquake, but they are very noisy. And a fire you could hear is, not only could you hear the helicopter flying around, not only could you hear the commotion, the people, you know, all the cars driving to and fro, and running, but you could also hear the fire in the distance. And I've often thought, man, imagine being right next to it. It would be loud. You know, I'm sure many of us have seen movies of fires. And it is very loud. Especially when the fire burns from inside and it explodes in the trees. Never knew that. You know, there's an experience for everything. So that's the mindset I have when I read these verses. So here we have Elijah. He has just come from Mount Carmel, and he's a you know he's he's actually you read the verses in, in chapter nineteen uh, before verse seven. He's actually running from the children of Israel. Remember, he's tried to repair the altar. He has repaired the altar, and he's on the run. And you know he, it's, the Bible says he's not on the run from Jezebel, although Jezebel put out a decree to kill him. He's actually on the run from the children of Israel or the unrepentant children of Israel. And, he, and then God directs him. It's interesting. We're going to compare Moses now. When Moses saw the calf, when Moses saw they came down from Mount Sinai and he saw the calf, he did get angry, but he went and he prayed and he interceded for the children of Israel. Here is what was different with Elijah. Let's go back to verse 9. So 
Sorry, we'll go to verse 10. The end of verse 9 and start of verse 10. The question is to Elijah, what doest thou here, Elijah, in verse, the end of verse 9? So remember, Elijah has run away. The children of Israel are trying to kill him. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord of God, the God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain the prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. So here we have a very interesting contrast between Moses and Elijah. Also, it's interesting that in the Mount of Transfiguration, it was Moses and Elijah that appeared to Jesus. But anyway, here we see the first mindset of, El of Elijah, an accusing mindset, accusations against the children of Israel, trying to kill him, and he's basically the total opposite of Moses. Moses was interceding. Elijah, instead of interceding, started accusing the children of Israel. And here's what's interesting. Before the light had come to Israel, and before you know his mind was set at, at freedom, at liberty, and, and his spirit was set free, Elijah, God, gave, uh, God came and said, gave him some food first, and he, go, and he said, go thy way. And he wandered in the wilderness for 40 days, which is symbolic of the children of Israel who wandered in the wilderness for 40 years before peace and liberty came upon them. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So here we see that same thing happening to Elijah. He had to learn the hard way. But this one was a 40-day journey. And then that question, I'll go back to it just quickly. The end of verse 9. What doest thou hear, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord of hosts. And so on. We'll go to verse 11. And here's God revealing himself to Elijah. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Or the storm. Like we spoke of earlier. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Verse 12. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And here's what's interesting. Now we know that Elijah had run. He's on the run. He's, he's accused the children of Israel to God and saying they've done all this, they, they're doing this to me and I'm the only one left, they've killed the prophets. And God asked him, what doest thou here? And he said those things right there. And God revealed himself in a vision, so to speak. And he said that God brought the wind that rent the mountains and God wasn't in the wind. He brought the, he brought the fire, God wasn't in the fire. And what was the other one? And he brought the earthquake. But God was not in the earthquake. But imagine being in all that. Just what I explained before. Imagine being in the storm. Picture yourself in a storm. Picture yourself maybe in, the, in an earthquake if you've been in one. Picture yourself maybe in a fire, a scene of fire. You know, maybe it's Black Saturday like I was. And then amongst it all, a stilling, a still small voice that calms the whole lot down. So imagine all that noise going on, the fire, the earthquake, the wind, and then a still small voice. You know, Spirit of Prophecy says it was the stilling of those noises. And then let's go back to verse, let's go to verse 12 again and we'll go to verse 13. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. So this voice had stilled everything. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said again, 
What doest thou here, Elijah? Now remember that mindset with the fire and all that? Picture yourself in it and the um, stilling of it. Now let's read verse 14 with that mindset. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. So here we hear the same question asked, what are you doing here? And it seems like the same answer is given. But if you've if you can understand where I'm com coming from, it's given in a different spirit this time. So now Elijah realizes that what's been happening, God, although it seems like all this noise is going around, maybe even in our church, maybe if, if, if it seems like it's falling apart in our jobs and everything, on the road, you know, you look at America, America is falling apart. You know, I'm glad to be in Australia, that's for sure. But America is falling apart. But amongst all that, a still small voice is still in control of the wind, the earthquake, and the fire. And this is when Elijah has that new mindset. When God asks him, what are you doing here? He gives him the same answer with a different spirit. He realizes now that God is, that he, God is still in control. You know, so that's, the, that's a blessing that I find is, uh, you know, although it seems like everything's falling apart around us, especially when you look at America, I don't know why I'm looking at America, but America is falling apart. You know what's interesting with America? When you get rid of the laws, there's a lot of people saying, defund the police. And it's interesting, when there's no police or when there's no law and order, there's only noise and destruction. There's a town in America called Ferguson in Seattle. They have burnt down their police station. They have done everything else. They've got no police around until a couple of days ago. Yesterday, I think. Until that yesterday, that was the most dangerous town in the world. When there's no police, when there's no law and order, when there's all this noise and you succumb to what you want, crime went up in, in Ferguson, Rape went up in, in Ferguson. There were no more stalls. They were basically saying, we the community can control what's going on. We don't need the police. But when there's no law and order, so what I'm trying to say, when there's no law, when we try and take away God's law from the church, when we take God's law away from our countries, we're going to have fire, earthquake, and strong winds. That will happen. That is all a result of not having God in our country or in our laws. So here we see what happens there. But I want to take you, in finishing, just real quickly, I want to take you back to verse 9 in chapter 19. And it reads, And he came thither unto a cave, or he came close unto a cave, Elijah came close unto a cave, and he lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here? And here's, here's, what I'm, here's where I'm coming to. Alan White calls this place a beautiful place, this cave. And if you don't know where Mount Horeb is where this cave was, Mount Horeb is the same place where Moses was. And so, where God calls him to, Ellen White says, perhaps, and I believe it is, it is the very same cliff of the rock that Moses came to. So Moses was called, he wanted to see the glory of God, and God called him to this rock. And we know we're talking about the rock being Jesus Christ. And if we're not standing on the rock, things are going to fall down, our homes are going to fall down, our church is going to fall down. And he brought him into this rock and he passed by and he showed him the, his back parts. Verse Exodus chapter 34 tells us the, shows us the character of God. Verse chapter 34 of Exodus, verse 6 I think it is. But then I made the, we made the, uh, the, 
observation that in order to see God, we must be hidden in the rock. And here we see when everything seems to be falling apart, when you look at the church, you know, it is falling apart, but God is still in it. That's what Elijah didn't see. When you see the world falling apart, but God still, that still small voice is still powerful enough to still the earthquake, the fire, and the wind. And so God saw it fitting to bring Elijah to the very same spot that Moses was. Because remember, God passed by in that vision. And, and Elijah was in the very, I believe he was in the very same cliff of the rock or the same cave that Moses was in. So brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say is, I still believe, I've come to this personal belief that everything that we believe in, we must be in the rock. Everything that we believe as a seventh day, everything in our family, we must, I believe, we must be wrapped in the righteousness of Christ. You know, sometimes I've, I know of many people who, when they look at the church, they get upset and they leave. Maybe we are upset and maybe we, are, we leave because we are not wrapped in the righteousness of Christ. You know, when you see things fall apart, it's even more where we need to rely on Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe so with all my heart now. So, and here's what's interesting. Further on in chapter 19, it says, God had, Elijah thought he was alone. But God said to Elijah, I have 7,000. So even though everything's, you look like, you feel like you're all by yourself, you are not. There are still faithful ones out there. God still has his chosen. You know, even maybe I believe there might be a remnant within the remnant. You know, so we, we have to be strong. And I believe with all my heart, we must come to that place where we hide ourselves in the rock. And if you want to know what the, the rock, I'm sorry, if you want to know what the wind, the earthquake and the fire are, Elijah is asked to anoint three people. One is Hazael, I think is how you say it. The other one is Jehu, and the last one is Elisha. These are the people who are represented as the as the as the uh, the wind, the earthquake, and the fire. But I leave you with that thought: when the when God is taken out of everything, everything falls apart. But when things fall apart. And you, and you feel disheartened, wrap yourself in that righteousness of Christ, because I believe that makes all the difference. So I'm going to leave you with that thought, and I'm going to pray that you have a happy Sabbath. And um, God bless Maranatha. Jesus is coming soon. And I'll finish with a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, bless us. Help us to realize, Lord, that um, even though things are falling apart, Help us to realize, Lord, that you direct us, Lord, back to that cave who, we, who I believe is represented as Jesus Christ, Lord. When America is falling apart, Lord, and some seem to worry that um, it brings forth all these things that are in prophecy, help us to realize that we need to be wrapped in the righteousness of Christ, Lord. When our families are falling apart, help us to realize that we need to be wrapped in the righteousness of Christ, Lord. In order to be wrapped, Lord, you also tell us to stand on the rock. So help us to stand upon the rock that we may be covered, Lord. But Lord, you are coming soon. I pray, Lord, that we learn to pray more, Lord. May we pray for our families. May we pray for our church. May we pray for those who, um, even our enemies, Lord. We are told that we must love our enemies. So pray, Lord, that we pray for everything, Lord. Help us to be ready when you come. And we look forward to uh, the Sabbath, Lord, where we get to spend with you in heaven that has no end, Lord. But until then, Lord, keep us strong and keep us faithful. Help us to be like Moses, and help us to be like Elijah, and help us to be wrapped, Lord, in the righteousness of Christ. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Jonah, for those wonderful words today. And um, we're going to sing our last hymn, which is 524, This So Sweet, To Trust in Jesus.
just to rest upon his promise, just to know the self the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust. I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for what you have given to us today. For your word that was spoken, for, for the songs that we sung, for the prayers that we pray to you. Lord, and as we, as we look around and we see so many things that are going, please, Lord, we ask of you to continue to assist the people that we can't, to continue to help and to provide for those helpless people that at this moment, they're crying out to you, Lord, just like we cry out to you now on their behalf. Lord, please uh, bring, us, uh, bring us healing. Bring healing to this land, Lord. Bring healing to the world. We leave it in your hands because you love us more than anyone. And we understand, Lord, that it is only in your time and, uh, and, uh, and, in, and it's only when it's the best that you answer, Lord. But we ask you today that you answer in the positive for all of these things. Um, Lord, we leave ourselves in your care. In the name of Jesus, we ask you. Amen. There is one thing that I'd like to ask you today, and that is to please, to please keep fighting against this virus. Please continue to contribute to stop the spread of this virus in your community, in any community that you're in, please do so. Um, the, the sooner that we do this, the more that we contribute contribute towards that we're also taking control ourselves and we're not leaving the control to this wicked virus so please i ask you to continue to do that of course if you would like to um, support the ministry of this church please do so by looking at the description down below today and there's one more thing that i like to say and that is May God be with you, may he bless you, and may he keep you safe. Amen.